All right, in this video, I want to look at um, working with uh, problems with fractions in them. We did a couple examples in class. I just wanted to look at a few more. So you might have a problem, maybe something like this. Maybe it'll have like x minus 3 over 5. Now let's put the variable on the bottom. That's even more interesting. Say you had 5 over x minus 3 equals 2 over x plus 1, something like that. We talked about in class that you could clear the fraction. You know, the problem we did in class looked like this. And so the denominator had numbers in them, and you we, we showed how you could multiply by that common denominator. And then what would happen is when you divided 5 into 20, it went 4 times. 4 goes into 25 times. So what you wound up with was 4 times x minus 2 equals 5 times 7. And that's what you would have gotten had you just taken the original problem and cross multiplied, they call it. That only works if you have a proportion, which means you have a fraction equal to a fraction. Okay? And that's what we have here. So we could utilize that shortcut we talked about in class. We could do 5 times the x plus 1 on one diagonal. That would equal 2 times the x minus 3 on the other diagonal. Okay? So then we'd finish the problem up by distributing. We'd get 5x plus 5 equals 2x minus 6. And then we might go on from there by bringing the x's onto the same side by making them go away from the right side. And we'd get 3x plus 5, and we'd have a negative 6. Don't drop that negative. A negative 6 left on the right. And then we've got a normal-looking equation from there. We just subtract 5. We get... 3x, that's gone, equals negative 11, because these are being added. A negative 6 plus a negative 5 is negative 11. To get rid of the 3, since it's being multiplied, we're going to divide. And so we wind up with a fraction for our answer, which is perfectly okay. And that would be fully simplified, and that would be your answer to that question. So this is a problem involving a, a fraction fractions, but I just wanted to go ahead and put variables in the denominator to show you what we learned in class about being able to cross multiply could work to help you even in a situation where you had uh, fractions in the denominator. Okay. All right. Now, most of the problems aren't going to be proportions. So I just wanted to look at a, a couple more of those. Let's look at this one. This is on a handout that I may not have given to you, which is okay. I, I just was working a few examples. Um, so let me just get rid of the number. So let's say we're trying to solve this problem. Well, on this one, it kind of depends on how comfortable you are with the fraction keys on your calculator. On this one, the Y is almost by itself. That's the only spot it's in. And so what I would probably do on this one is just add five sixths to both sides. It would knock out the negative 5, 6 and leave me the y and then just use your calculator to do the negative 3 fourths plus the 5, 6 and see what the answer turns out to be. You do not have to take time to figure out how this works by hand. Okay, I'm going to do it by hand because I don't have my calculator with me. So I would need a common denominator and I'm thinking about making the denominator be 12. So I'd have to multiply by 2 on the top and bottom for the 5 6 to get a 12 down there. Then I'd have to multiply by 3 in order to get a 12 down there. And then what you should get on your calculator when you type in negative 3 fourths plus 5 6, you should wind up getting positive 1 12 And so really just don't do all that, just use a calculator. And you can use the fraction keys to type it in. Okay, or you can just do negative 3 divided by 4 plus 5 divided by 6. The calculator will follow order of operations, and it will give you probably a decimal 
for that. So it, it'll probably give you some decimal amount. And then you just need to know how to change from fraction to decimal. Okay. All right, let's do one with, with quite a bit more um, going on. Okay. So let's say you had one like this. Let's say you had one with 4 elevenths x plus 1 third equals 2 fifths minus 7 elevenths x plus 2 fifths. Okay. By the way, let's back up a second. The way I did it on the left was just to deal with the fraction as is. I didn't clear them out. I just kept them in there and used my calculator. If I had wanted to, I could have looked at how both the 4 in the denominator and the 6 would divide into 12 evenly. And then I could have cleared. This would be clearing the fractions if I had wanted to. I would take the 12 and I would multiply, but I'd have to multiply both sides by it. So I would do 12 times the negative 5, 6 and, and 12 times the y, even though the y doesn't have a denominator. And so I would think about how 12 gets multiplied by this, 12 gets multiplied by that. Okay. So when I do that, the 6 goes into the 12 twice, leaves me with negative 10 plus 12y. Over here, the 4 goes into the 12 three times. See how it cleared out that denominator? And then 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. And so if you, if you get into clearing the fractions, here's what it does. It gives you a, a, a problem that doesn't have any fractions in it anymore. And you've had a lot of experience with trying to get the y by itself. You would add 10. That would leave you with 12y equaling 1. And then you divide by 12. And we'd wind up with y being 1 12th. Okay? All right, so that's how it would have worked if we had cleared the fractions. I don't think I would have cleared the fractions on this one, though, because the y was almost by itself. So I just needed to add 5 6 to both sides and be done with it. Okay? On this problem, I'm looking at it thinking, well, maybe I should clear the fractions. But with this one, I don't think I would because 11, 3, and 5 are the denominators. So my common denominator would be really big. It'd be like 165. And I don't know that I want to deal with those large numbers. So let's kind of see how things might work. So first, you know how we normally simplify each side? Well, the left side is already simplified, okay? But on the right side, I've got the two-fifths that I could add with the other two-fifths. So that would give me negative 7 elevenths x plus 4-fifths. The two-fifths plus two-fifths would be four-fifths. See how they had common denominators, so they were easy to add? Or I could have used my calculator if I didn't know how that worked. All right, then I could clear fractions, but again, I'd be using 165 to try to clear it, and it's just bigger than I feel like dealing with. So what I might do is just go in here and add 7 elevenths x to both sides. Okay. When I do, that's going to leave me with just 4 fifths on the right. And then I got kind of lucked out here because 4 elevenths and 7 elevenths, I'm just counting up how many elevenths, and I've got 11 elevenths. And I still have that plus 1 third. And 11 elevenths is really just 1x. All right, so now I'm to here. Now at this point, I need to subtract a third, and 1 third and 4 fifths do not have common denominators. Okay, so here you would either maybe subtract a third from both sides and then just use your calculator, the fraction keys, to get what that's going to turn out to be. Okay, and so you could do that. I think it's going to turn out to be 7 fifteenths. We'll check it in a minute. Or from here, if I don't have my calculator, sometimes what I like to do is just multiply through by 15. That's called clearing the fractions. But see how I don't have to do it at the beginning 
if I don't want to, but maybe I want to later. So three goes into 15 five times. Five goes into 15 three times. And then I have a nice, easy equation to work. So this would be going, oops, going over kind of midway through and deciding, okay, I'm going to clear the fractions. Or just keep them in there and deal with it like you do any other number and just use the fraction area of your calculator. Okay, so I could do this. That would give me 15x, that would equal 7, divide by 15, and I would wind up with x being 7 over 15. All right, so that's that's a, either one of those is a good way to approach that problem. Okay. All right, we did a couple of these in class, so I'm trying to do the ones that we didn't do in class. All right, so I want to rework one though. I'm going to go ahead and do this one, number 10, or this problem. Let me just write the problem. There was a problem that had parentheses. And so what I would do is just get rid of the parentheses first. I wouldn't clear the fractions until after the parentheses are gone. And I would just take negative 1 fourth times negative 8 on my calculator, and that would turn out to be 2. Then I'd, I'd take 1 half times x, 1 half times 2, and that would get 1, be 1. And then I just have x plus 15 over here. Okay. Then at that point, you could clear fractions, but maybe maybe since the, the fractions are kind of normal, you might be able to think about them. Okay. You might wait until you put the 2 and the 1 together, though, even if you are going to clear fractions. So if you don't want to use your calculator, you, would, you could go to here. And then at this point, you could use your calculator to do negative 1 fourth plus 2. Or if you know these familiar fractions, you would know this would turn out to be a fourth. Negative 1 fourth plus 1 half. Or just use your calculator. Okay, so you could do that. And then I'll show you the clearing fractions approach if you want. So you don't have to clear the fractions. If you don't clear the fractions, you would get to this point, And then you would move those x's together. That would leave you 15 on the right, and then you'd have 1 fourth minus an understood 1. Positive 1 fourth and a negative 1 would be negative 3 fourths x. Okay. So you could decide to clear fractions at that point, or you could just proceed working towards getting the x by itself. You could get to here where you have negative 3 fourths x, and that would equal. 12. And then maybe at that point, I, I would highly recommend at this point, you don't use your calculator to divide by negative 3 fourths. It works so great just to multiply by 4. Then divide out the negative 3. And you wind up with x being over here, you'd have a, what is that? 3 goes in there 16 times, it'd be negative 16. Okay. All right, so that approach I just did, let me shorten it. That was not clearing the fractions until you might say right there at the very, near the very end. Okay. All right, now you might clear the fractions from right here if you wanted to. If you didn't want to just use the fraction keys and you want to use that idea of clearing the fractions, You would look at the denominators and see a 4 and a 2 and realize that 4 is what it would take to clear those fractions. And then you'd multiply by 4. It would have to get distributed to every term on both sides. Okay, so the 4 would knock out the denominator and leave you with negative 1x. 2 goes into 4 twice. That would leave you with 2x. This would be a 12. Here we'd have 4x. Here we'd have 60. Okay, So then we could, just from there, we don't have fractions anymore, so we're just kind of working through it like we're used to, getting our like terms combined, then moving the x's together onto the same side. OK. 
Okay. Then getting rid of the 12. And then finally getting rid of the negative three. And you see we wind up at the same point. So it's, it's sort of a matter of preference. The thing is, I'd kind of like for you to learn how to clear fractions. So you could make a good decision about when you want to do it and when you don't. Okay. All right, we'll do one more fraction problem, but don't get overwhelmed. Not every problem is going to have fractions in it. Okay. Oops, so let's do this one. So here's one that allows us to review something else tricky about equations. Okay. It's got a negative in front of a parenthesis. All right, so first I would want you to remember how that's like having a negative one there, and you need to get rid of the parenthesis on that side. So you'd have 1 fourth K minus 1 K minus 1 fourth. On the other side, you distribute the 1 16th and do 1 16th times K, and then take 1 16th times the 4. If you did that on your calculator, it would give you 1 fourth because it would get this, and then it would divide by 4 and give you a fourth. But the calculator would do all that simplifying. So now you can just keep the fractions in there and just use your calculator to combine like terms and that type of thing. But let's, let's go ahead on this one, just show the clear, clearing the fractions. I wouldn't do it till after I got rid of the parentheses. Then I would look at these denominators and I'm noticing 16 and four. So I would need to use 16 in that case to clear out the fractions. So what I'm gonna do is do 16 times every single spot because it has to get distributed all the way through on both sides. And so the four would divide into the 16 four times, so you'd have 4K. 16 times one would be 16K. 16 times a fourth you could do by four going into 16 four times, and it's a minus. 16 divided by 16 is just 1K. I'll go ahead and put the one. And then 16 times a fourth is back to just four. Okay. And that could be done on your calculator if you wanted, or the reason we pick 16 is because it would knock out that denominator. 16 would knock out that 16. This is a lot of times where people mess up because it didn't have a fraction. So sometimes people don't think they need to multiply by it, but to keep that equation balanced, you got to be sure you, you do the same thing to both sides. All right. So now from here, we don't have fractions, and we just look at how 4K and a negative 16K would be negative 12K. So now we're to the point where we have a K on both sides. We need to bring them together. So we'll take away K. So it's gone from that right-hand side, and I just have a 4. Over here, I have a negative 13K. Then I'm going to add 4 to both sides so that I get my variable term isolated. And then see how that's negative 13 times K? So I'm gonna divide by negative 13 and I get an awful fractional answer that all I gotta do is make sure it's fully simplified. And then that's gonna be the end, all right? So these do feel a lot harder than some of the other equations. If you like the clearing of fractions, I think it works pretty well. All right, what I'm gonna do in another video is I'll go through some of the problems on the review. And um, remember, I'll be reviewing tomorrow night if you can join me at seven.